we'd like to just read the uh, portions of the Bible that all, all are happy and, and uh, loving and God's uh, just always talk about his mercy, but sometimes uh, the Lord, like a good parent, scolds us and uh, warns us of a, of a way that we might be. So this is going to be a little bit heavier duty uh, time, time of preaching, but the good news is there's always mercy, right? So at the end of the sermon time, we're going to have anointing prayers. So, so if, 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 if something makes you feel a little guilty, you'll be, be ready. But since we're going to have a heavy duty time, I thought we'd start out a little bit light because um, I'm going to ask you different questions and to say, it, you might be lukewarm if you do that. So I want to start out lighter and uh, apologies to anybody who might consider themselves a redneck. Does anyone know the red <laughs> jokes? And there's a, there's a comedian and, and uh, it's clean so I can say a few of it. You might be a redneck if you ever cut your grass and found a car. <laughs> you might be a redneck if you think the stock market has a fence around it. <laughs> you might be a redneck if you own a homemade fur coat. <laughs> oh, wow. You might be a redneck if birds are attracted to your beard. <laughs> you might be a redneck if you ever hit a deer with your car deliberately. Yeah. <laughs> And, and finally, you might be a redneck if you think a subdivision is part of a math problem. So, <laughs> so there's our lightness, okay. But the Lord was uh, scolding it in the church, and so I want to say now, you might be lukewarm if you never talk about Christ during the week. You might be lukewarm if you don't consider what would be Christ's best when you're making decisions about your life. You might be lukewarm if you never pray during the week. You might be lukewarm if you appreciate Christ's teaching, but you don't think you should be inconvenienced to follow him. And you might be lukewarm if you don't know that Christ is the most wonderful thing in the world and that from him all blessings flow. There you go. The, the, when Jesus said in that morning, he, he didn't want you to be lukewarm, neither cold nor hot. I want to tell you why lukewarmness is a direct insult to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if we know him and his ways, but we don't find it important enough to disturb our everyday lives with his presence and teachings, then we really are demonstrating that we don't find Christ important. And we say Christ is important, but we have to, through the week, that means, and I hate to say it, I grew up in one of those families that, uh, a part of our family went to church anyways, but the Lord was never mentioned between Sundays. And uh, I'm not going to judge anyone's faith, but just saying there's, there's a better way. There's a better way. You know, if we tell people that Christ is our Lord, number one, highest priority, we, we have to show earnestness about it. And if we don't feel that zeal and we, we don't have to work it up, we'll pray and the Holy Spirit will help us. But God said that is the poorest witness of all. It's not the atheist who's a bad witness for the Lord. It's the Christian who doesn't show any fire, any excitement that God is the greatest thing that ever happened to them. That's the worst witness ever to the kingdom of God. And Christ is actually saying, I wish you'd be either hot or cold. And I'll tell you the truth, atheists are closer to God sometimes because it would be easier to turn an atheist to God uh, than it is sometimes a lukewarm because they uh, really are against God, but when it's time just when it's time for them to learn about the Lord and they do, they catch on big time. And I've seen it, seen it happen. I've seen it happen. We don't want to do that in, you know, inconsistency that we uh, just don't feel like Christ is that important, that we make decisions about all our time, all our money, all whatever we're going to do, and we don't consider 
the Lord during the week? How does God's glory going to happen this day? Or like he told all through the Old Testament, he said, when you're my people, I bless you. But not just for you to feel blessed, I bless you so that you will be a blessing to someone else. You know, lukewarmness is a sin because it's a form of pride and idolatry. People can only be lukewarm if they feel self-sufficient and something else takes the place of God. So in Revelation, the people said, I, they felt pretty good about themselves. Let, let's see again what, what the word said. How hard is it to flip back to the scripture, to the beginning of the, the chapter? Like three, very, whoops, I'm, I'm making it very hard. Just the scripture. Oh, there, no Sorry. Okay. Okay, go on down the next slide. Okay, you say I'm rich, I've acquired wealth and don't need a thing, but you don't realize that you're wretched, pitiful, poor, and blind. So some folks, they had a high opinion of themselves. They said, I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I don't need a thing. And we, of course, we do feel more of a need for God when we're having trouble. And so when we get this sin of self-sufficiency, so not that God doesn't want us to, to do our very best to take care of ourselves, but in our spiritual lives, we, we don't want to have self-sufficiency thinking that we can do it ourselves. That is not what Christianity is about. That's why we sing the wonderful cross. Without the cross, we would be dead in our sins. And when we sing with the kids... Uh, it's from John chapter 15. Now here's what we do in the um, CEC. We sing, his banner over me is love. But I always tell them my favorite verse. Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. <laughs> <laughs> they all stand up and do that. And, and so that's, we have to realize that we cannot be self-sufficient in our spiritual lives. If that were so, Christ wouldn't have to come to earth and die for us. So whenever we think, I'm doing, I'm pretty good, I, I really, uh, I'm taking care of things myself, I don't really need to pray during the week, I'm, I'm handling things. Uh, that's a, a direct insult to God, uh, who wants a daily relationship with us. Lukewarmness is a front to Christ because in the zeal of God's cause to save sinners, he sent his one and only son. That's how much God loves us. And I remember this verse, um, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Does anyone know that's sort of a famous verse? But they would use it for uh, non, total non-believers. Behold, Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and he does, because he wants everyone to come to him. But you see in context, he was talking to Christians who were sort of ignoring him, neither hot nor cold. He says, I'm knocking. I'm knocking to be part of your life every day, and you're not letting me in. And that's who he was talking to. And uh, he could have just said, well, forget them. <laughs> but no, that isn't the way our God is. And when I explain that big window out there to the kids, uh, Jesus, the good shepherd, and he's carrying a lamb, and we reminded him of the story. There were a hundred sheep, but one went astray. One, each person, and Jesus went after that lost sheep. He couldn't stand that they would be out there on their own and get eaten up by sin and uh, just have be away from his goodness. And so he went after them to love them. So to do this, we need to part with our self-sufficiency and remember what a great God we have. Now, I wanted you to look in your Bible, so everyone get your Red Pew Bible out. I'm going to start putting the page numbers in, because that would be easier for you. We're going to look in the Old Testament now, in Isaiah. See if you can find a verse. You know where Psalm is, right in the middle? And then go back toward the New Testament, but I'll also help you. Page 685. 685, Isaiah 55. 
The reason we're doing this is Jesus talked to them to come buy gold for me. I'll make you pure. And how are they going to buy something when he said they were poor and pitiful? Here's, here's how. 685, Isaiah 55. And in the Pew Bibles it says, an invitation to an abundant life. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money, without price. So God's saying he's going to give us our goodness if we come to him. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy trying to put something else in God's place? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so you'll live. I'll make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for all the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know. Nations that you do not know shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Listen to the next part. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. So it means today is the day of salvation. Let the wicked forsake their way, the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he might have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. So here's Jesus again throughout the scripture saying, you don't have the means. And you don't have the money to buy it. You don't have the way to get holy, but I do. But in that gift, all God wants back from us is our love, our gratitude, that we value him, that we value God, and people see that in our lives. One of the questions um, that was asked in with the kids that were here, and uh, they said, well, how could Jesus be the Messiah? Because when the Messiah comes, everything is put right. And that's what, how some of the scriptures are. And I said, he came and the beginning of things started to be put right. One by one, as people followed Jesus, I gave an example of when Christian missionaries went to India. There's this practice of that women have no value, so when the husband dies, no matter what age, the widow was thrown on the fire, live, with the husband, because once he's dead, they have no value. So the Christian missionaries worked against that because they knew the value that God made everyone in his image. So I said, things did change. They changed here and there. Everywhere that Christ was brought, things were changed. So the kingdom of God started when Jesus came, and it will culminate in his return and everything. But right. God wants us to be excited about that. When people see us as Christians, if we're not thinking that Christ is the greatest value, if Christ just doesn't slip into our conversations sometimes, you know, I was worried but I prayed about it, or anything that gave witness to the Lord, people will, will wonder why they should come in the building, why they should come. So in, in this uh, warning to this church, but to, it's also in the Bible, so that means it's instruction to all of us. Christ calls us to repent of lukewarmness. The, and that kept being underlined. I guess it's not really a word according to the, the typo. But Christ calls us to repent of lukewarmness and promises a place with him on his throne if we overcome. That's what it said in Revelation. Christ said, I overcame. I know what it is, the distractions of the world. He knew what it is, the temptations, that other things could be more important. But he overcame, and he promises, if we'll overcome, we will be with him on his throne. Now let's say a prayer together. Lord, we do repent of putting other things first and not even meaning to, being distracted by the world. We repent of acting during the week like your influence doesn't matter and making all these decisions without you. We repent that we don't 
pray every day, don't believe enough that you want to change this world that we offer our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And hear the prayers that will be during the anointing prayer time. For you told us to ask, and we shall receive. In your holy name, amen.